Find the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side. That's a positive. This is a piecewise graph. So to find the limit, basically we just have to find the limit from the positive side. We don't even care about the negative side. Okay. So which of these is from the positive side? This one right here, x is greater than 1. Isn't that from the positive side? So this is the one we're paying attention to. Now, let's first just find the output. Because it's the output from the positive side. Don't we have to find, basically, for this one, you're just going to plug in 1. What's 1 minus 1? 0. So for the bottom, you get 0. But for the top, what do you get when you plug in 1? 1. Are these two graphs going to hit at 1? For this line, when I plugged in 1, I got an output of 0. For this one, what do I approach? 1. So, if this was just the limit as x approaches 1, does it exist? No. 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 But is it asking for the... Is it actually asking for the limit? No, it's asking for the positive side. So does it care about this one up here? No. no. But I was just trying to point something out. That the limit does not exist. But does the limit exist from the positive side? Yes. What is it approaching? It is approaching, that's your answer, zero. So if it's greater than okay. one part in that? From that side, it is approaching zero. Okay. From the other side, it would be approaching one, so the limit does not exist, but from the, for the specific question, that's the answer. Okay. If we wanted to know from the negative side, it would be one, basically. I explained more than needed. Okay, next one. Where is it discontinuous? The way you find discontinuities, all you do basically is look at the denominator, set it equal to zero. Discontinuities are where the bottom equals zero. Because you cannot have a zero in the denominator. When I solve this, there's two ways. I'm basically going to do the factoring method. So I get x equals 3 and negative 3. So both 3 and negative 3 will make this graph have either holes or asymptotes. Are we OK with that? Those are my answers. Those are where it'll be discontinuous. And it's kind of nice. All you care about is the denominator. The problem is, it's not stated here, but which of these two are removable? Which are holes? Which are asymptotes, probably? Because those are the major two we'll deal with. Um, the way we find that is we basically factor top and bottom here. So this is x minus 3 on top and the bottom. x minus 3, x plus 3. Those cancel. You have f of x equals 1 over x plus 3. So that means that did we just remove 3? <coughs> Can we remove negative 3? So x equals 3 because it was removed, because 3 minus 3 gives you 0. Remove that problem. X equals 3 is removable. Meaning, it's a whole. Okay. X equals 3 is removable. It's a whole. Both are discontinuous, but x equals 3 is movable. X equals negative 3. Because when you look right here, negative 3, no matter what you do, will always be discontinuous. will always have a weird spot. 
that'll probably be an asymptote. This one. I want to find out where this is discontinuous. So you take the denominator. Oops. X minus 3 and equal it to 0. That is very simple. Pathetically, I'm done. That is my only spot of discontinuity. My next question is, is it a removable? Is it a whole, an asymptote, or one of those actual split things? When you have absolute values, you'll get used to realizing this is one of those where it kind of looks like this. It's going to look something like that. You'll get used to seeing those. How do we know that? Well, first of all, I don't have any method to factor cancel or anything to... I, I know for sure this isn't removable. Because there's nothing like over here where I can factor and stuff. So with this one, I know it's going to be non-removable. I kind of, with practice, you learn it looks like this. But how do we verify it's not removable? You take the limit from both sides, just to verify. And we're, do you understand my limits at 3? Because that's what we're checking. I'm going to take it from the negative side. And I'm putting f of x just to write it easier. So when I take the limit as f of, as it comes from the negative side, now when I plug in 3, does it work? No. But if you took the limit, there's no way to take the limit. It actually has to be a numeric approximation. So what you'd have to do is a numeric one, one a thing. And I'm going to make it kind of easy. I'm just going to do 1, 2. And then we'll do this in a second. And then I'm also going to do the limit as x approaches 3 from the positive side of f of x. And we're going to do a table. And that would be maybe like 4 and 5. I'm just trying to get a visual. On this problem, you probably don't need to do all this. I'm just trying to give you more information to see it. Anyways, when you plug in 1 to this equation, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. But doesn't this top negative 2 become a positive 2? So I have a positive 2 over negative 2 giving me that's a negative 1. When I plug in 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1 becomes a positive one over negative one. Doesn't this also become negative one? So basically, do you see it's going to be a flat line at negative one? This one, when you plug in four, I get four minus three, which is positive one, and four minus three, which is positive one. So isn't that positive one? This would be two over two, which becomes one. Do you see how they approach different points? One approaches negative one, one approaches one, it's a flat line. Thus we kind of had a little proof showing this is going to be negative one, this is going to be one. They don't meet. It looks like this. That's a way to kind of show it.